YouTube can be a tremendous source of free advertisement that gives your game an insane amount of visibility, but can spoil your story and destroy your sales. We want to make a game that targets YouTube. It is a psychedelic roguelike and you can go to the description and wishlist it on Steam. But what does a game need to succeed on YouTube if only someone could figure that out? Well, turns out my day job is being an actual scientist, so I might as well do some sciencing here. We will cover things you can do with your game to make it more attractive to play for a YouTuber and to buy for a potential player after seeing it on YouTube. Oh, and I will say YouTube for simplicity, but it should be transferable to Twitch and other platforms. The first thing we have to do to understand this issue is to enter the mind of a YouTuber. What does a gaming YouTuber want or need from a game in order to play it? If you check these boxes, someone will likely play our game eventually. At the end of the day, there's only one metric that matters. Views. But these are determined by more factors. Within an episode, YouTubers mainly live off three things. Click rate, watch time and engagement rate. What mechanisms in a game can provide that? Watch time is high when a viewer is hooked early and kept interested throughout the play session. As hooks we basically want to create these I wonder how that will turn out situations. To keep viewers in, the game can throw cues to a YouTuber by giving the YouTuber something to react to give an opinion about or make a plan over. They can more effectively do that entertainment thing they are supposed to do. But of course, it simply helps when your play sessions tell an interesting little story on their own. Look how magical that is. What drives click rates? Mostly crazy events that drive emotion. Think what happens in a play session that makes a good title or thumbnail. People like to click on crazy broken builds or stuff that sounds absurd. And how do you get people to engage? It is again all about driving emotion. Subverting a viewer's expectations is a good way to do it. People also love to point out mistakes in a YouTuber's decisions, which will spark discussion. For each of these things, gameplay full of ups and downs, successes and failures are desirable. And speaking of that, if we sparked positive emotion in you, give us a like so this video can spread. A factor so obvious that it is easy to miss is overall playtime. The longer our game is, the more videos a YouTuber might produce about it. A game with only a single hour of playtime will likely not receive a thousand parts coverage by a single person. But that is not the only factor. No YouTuber can justify making a thousand episodes if audience interest vanishes after only three. It is inevitable that people lose interest in a log series. So having play sessions that work independently is key to allow for that kind of massive coverage. You can easily start in the Binding of Isaac episode 766, but would you drop in in the middle of a Morrowind let's play? Still, complete independence of play sessions is not a good target to aim for. It is necessary to motivate a viewer to watch the next part. So building a cliffhanger is very beneficial. For example, with a nice unlock at the end of a play session. We did it! Paradox! But we as game developers don't directly care about clicks on videos of our games. We can't eat clicks. We care about sales. They taste so much better. And this is different. Between these two, there sits a conversion rate, which does make things a little more difficult. Basically, the viewer of a video must feel an urge to buy the game. This means they must feel like they do not already have the full experience after watching the video. This is a huge problem for games that only offer a story and nothing else. It additionally helps if the viewer already feels invested into the game just by watching the video. And of course, it helps when your game looks like it is fun to play. But how do we deduct a game concept from that? The answer is, we don't. This would be way too much work and other designers far smarter than I am, already did that. We will take a look at the most successful games on YouTube and some other ones I will cherry pick to support my point. If we look at the five games most played on YouTube 2020, we see Minecraft by a large margin, followed by Roblox and Karina Free Fire, which looks like Fortnite to me, GTA 5 and the actual Fortnite. These obviously did very well. Let's find out why that might be. All these games can be played for a very long time, but they offer mostly episodes that can be enjoyed without having watched previous ones. We said we liked that. The way these games stay interesting is by basically having infinite content, either by procedural generation, 
player creativity or having an ever-changing multiplayer experience. If we look at roguelikes, another type of game that tends to overperform on YouTube, we see a similar pattern. Infinite content that leads to many independent episodes. And most of them offer unlocks at the end of a session, which build motivation to see the unlocked item in future episodes. Having a game where knowledge is a large part of the player progression is very helpful. That way a player actively gets better at the game just by watching. This is great for us in two ways. Someone already playing your game might be driven to YouTube in order to improve. And someone finding your game on YouTube might feel motivated to start playing because they already know a lot. Also, all these games offer a large amount of player expression. Player expression is generally great to have, but for a YouTuber, it allows them to be interesting. Every relevant player decision is a potential talking point for the YouTuber and the comment section. It might be a suboptimal play in the eyes of some, or a mind-blowingly good one in the eyes of others. But either way, each player decision is an opportunity for entertainment and to incite emotion into the viewer, which will keep them watching, which will feed the algorithm, which will result in more views, which will feed both you and the YouTuber. So, time for a conclusion. Keep YouTube and Twitch on your mind when designing your game, and you can benefit from that. Getting infinite content helps. This can be implemented in different ways, like the procedural generation of roguelikes, multiplayer of MOBAs and FPSs, and user-generated content like in Minecraft and Roblox. Player expression is always nice and extra nice if your player is currently recording. The best structure I could identify is mostly independent episodes with cliffhangers. But keep in mind, I just share a bit of research with you and hope you might find it helpful. So keep an eye out for the opinions of clever people in the comments and let me know what you think. What have I missed? Where am I wrong? Also, you can watch more of our stuff if you want.